I have collected material in various situations over several months to compare RAW with standard video recording formats. I will primarily focus on the Sony FX6 with its compressed RAW and all eye codec, but also provide some examples from Blackmagic, the Ursa 12K, the 6K and the old production camera to have ProRes, B-RAW and Cinema DNG RAW and also ARRI with ProRes and uncompressed ARRI RAW. This topic is more complex than one might think because many of the advantages and disadvantages of each format depends on whether the material is correctly interpreted and displayed. So please be aware that I don't necessarily possess the ultimate truth. Before I show you various test clips and excerpts from short films as examples, I would suggest you take a self-test. There's probably a reason why you clicked on this video or searched for this topic and you likely have a certain idea of what the test results might be and why. If you pause the video for a moment, jot down or leave a comment about what you believe the test results will be and how significant the difference is before continuing to watch, you can honestly assess how much you really knew and how much you simply believed. I know it takes some courage, but if you dare to do it, I have the uttermost respect for your willingness to reflect honestly on your opinions and knowledge. In this video, you'll find four chapters. In the first chapter, we explore white balance with extreme examples to determine the extent of possible corrections. The second chapter delves into dynamic range. The third chapter focuses on extreme color correction. And the fourth chapter is dedicated to chroma keying. What's important to know is that when saving a RAW format, the RAW data is stored and the actual image is only calculated in the editing software. This is important because the material can be composed into an image differently from one software to another. For example, let's compare ProRes RAW, which has been interpreted in Final Cut Pro, and converted Cinema DNG RAW in DaVinci Resolve. Especially at small contrasting structures, we can see that some pixel calculations differ. And those calculation errors or differences are not present in the internal recording. In the subsequent tests, I'll focus on Resolve as it provides me with the most extensive color grading tools. When it comes to the grading workflow, we have three basic options in Resolve. First, we use LUTs to convert our material. Second, we use a DaVinci color managed workflow or third, an ACES based workflow. In the last two variants, Resolve takes care of the color management for us and either automatically detects the color space in which the material was recorded or we must define it for the material. And with all three methods, the end result looks different and has its own advantages and disadvantages. I will mainly focus on an ACES workflow because it has mostly delivered reliable results in my tests and is generally a cross-program standard. To determine how much color information is retained in each case, I conducted a test with different cameras and extreme white balance adjustments. The clear winner, ARRI. In a scene lit with a 3200K light and recorded with a white balance of 7000K, the adjusted results are nearly identical, whether shot in RAW or ProRes and whether the white balance was adjusted in the RAW tab or not. Looking at Sony's FX6 with the same setup, both formats seem to perform similar at first glance. Upon closer inspection, with all eye, a bluish tint is noticeable in darker areas. Even with the white balance shifted strongly towards green, color can be seemingly well restored at first glance. However, unwanted colors, in this case purple, are visible with all eye. Here's another white balance with a strong tint shift towards orange. The opposing color, blue, is clearly visible, especially along the contrast edges of the letters. The differences are also noticeable in individual colors here. I'll spare you additional examples, but there is a discernible difference. Considering how off the settings were, I'm surprised at how well colors can be restored with the all eye recording. The Ursa 12K almost behaves like that. However, in a ProRes recording with extreme color shifts, 
I couldn't restore the color as effectively as with Arri or Sony. To examine potential differences in dynamic range, I recorded a cloudy sky, opened the aperture until large parts of the sky were overexposed and lowered the exposure in Resolve to reveal the clipping point. Importantly, changes for the RAW clips should be made in the RAW tab. For the FX6, there are no additional highlight informations, regardless of whether highlight recovery is activated or not. It's just the same with Aerie. I couldn't discern a significant difference in the highlights. With Blackmagic, on the other hand, we have more highlight informations with RAW, offering a minimal advantage. But in this case, you have to check the highlight recovery to get these extra informations. Here you can see with the old production camera 4K that shoots in uncompressed DNG RAW, you can check that box and you get extra informations in the highlights, just like with the 6K, with the 12K and other cameras. Those highlights are not necessarily beautiful, but they exist. In the shadows, no camera provided more information, but you can see a little difference in noise performance and also some color shifts. Let's talk about extreme grading. Despite various attempts to push the material to its limits, both formats performed great. Zooming in, we can sometimes see larger pixel blocks with all eye, similar to what we've seen in previous tests on the all eye codec. In addition to that, all eye looks to me a little bit smoother or washed out. And it feels like it's a little more saturated and it leans almost towards subtractive saturation a little bit but the overall difference is surprisingly small. Moving on to chapter 4 and chroma keying. Here the aforementioned all eye pixel blocks are clearly visible. RAW has more noise, but this can be reduced with noise reduction. While I prefer seeing as few of these digital pixel blocks as possible at the edges, the difference here is not significant and is less visible in motion. But personally, I would still choose RAW for green screen recordings. An advantage of RAW sometimes can be seen when the RAW recording has a higher resolution. This extra detail is evident, for example, in the Sony's 4.2K and the Arri with 2.8K instead of 2K. The difference varies, but sometimes it can be advantageous. Now, because I feel like I've been repeating myself for minutes, I conclude here. There are visible and measurable advantages of RAW, but they surprisingly have minimal impact in normal and well-lit settings. The result of my own self-test is that I expected much more from RAW, partially due to the widespread belief in its superiority. However, it seems that the time when this statement was entirely accurate has passed. It appears that recording RAW is most worthwhile with Blackmagic cameras, as the codec allows for pleasantly small file sizes while still offering the advantages of RAW. What has become particularly clear to me is the importance of the interplay between RAW and the editing software. In the past there were issues with RAW in the highlights, where information suddenly disappeared and ugly edges appeared. Turns out it wasn't correctly interpreted by Resolve, and there was a bug that made material be displayed incorrectly. Thanks for staying to the end, and I hope you've learned something. And if you have ideas for a test that better demonstrate the superiority of RAW, let me know. Otherwise, I believe we can conclude that modern cameras with good lock profiles come very close to the capacity of RAW recordings and are sufficient in the vast majority of cases. Here's a brief overview of different cameras, their codecs and their file size ratios. <laughs>